Classes were suspended at the University of Virginia again today after that deadly mass shooting on campus there. An impromptu vigil drew so many people, organizers ran out of candles. People had to hold their phones up instead. Students were remembering the lives of football players Devin Chandler, Lavelle Davis Jr., and Deshaun Perry. The suspected shooter, their former teammate, Christopher Darnell Jones Jr., will appear before a judge tomorrow. We learned today that he was on that field trip to Washington and on the bus where the shooting took place. Joining us now is a UVA student who was on board that bus when the shooting happened. Ryan Lynch was part of that 22-person African-American theater class that was returning from Washington, D.C., where they had just seen a play about Emmett Till. Ryan, uh, thank you so much for, for talking with us tonight. I know that, that this is just unthinkable, what you've had to endure and, and, and witnessed. Let's just start with you and, and how you're holding up. Um, it's been really hard the last few days and nights. I um, finally was able to get some sleep last night, which was really relieving, but it's just been really challenging. A lot of tears, a lot of um, just confusion and just heartbroken. Of course. Can you walk us through what you witnessed that night on the bus? Yes, um, I was sitting on the bus and we pulled up to Cobra Theater and the bus was not fully stopped. And when I was sitting there, I was grabbing my things, my book bag, just getting ready to get off in a few seconds. Um, and then I just started hearing gunshots coming from the back of the bus. I had no idea what it was at first. I thought it was um, chips or like balloons. I was really confused. Um, and then after I would say the fourth gunshot, there was a like cloud of smoke that filled the bus and after I smelled that, even though I couldn't see anything going on in the back, um, I knew there was something really bad happening. So I had a friend who was sitting across from me and we just looked at each other and we both got down on the floor in between the chair in front of us and the chair we were sitting in. And I put my jacket over me and my blanket, um, but I left my eyes out so I could just see um, if anyone was, going through the aisles or what was trying to see what was going on because um, I was just so confused with so much chaos and um, I was told that there was screaming but all I heard was the gunshots and my ears were ringing and then they just kept getting closer the um, sound of the shots just kept kind of creeping up the aisle and I saw um, the shooter pass me and he passed me very slowly. So I was scared that with all the shots that were fired, he had shot everyone on the bus. So I thought he was gonna shoot me too. And I just sat there quiet still, um, didn't say anything. And um, thank goodness he just passed me and went off the bus. And then he shot into the air again when he got off. So. There were just so many shots going on everywhere. It was a lot of confusion. And then finally, I just heard my teacher yelling for everyone to get off the bus. And um, there were so more people that moved off the bus. And I don't remember exactly who it was. Everything happened. It felt so slow while he was on the bus firing. But once he was off, it felt really, um, quick and then I got up and I saw um, my friend Lavelle to the left of me laying face flat in the middle of the aisle and um, I, it was absolutely devastating to see him laying down and my friend who um, was sitting across from me, she said we, we have to try and help him and so we were both CPR certified so she, um, checked his pulse and it was very faint and i was um checking his body and he had gunshots i saw one in his head i saw one in his back um they were just it looked like they were all over him he had on a bright orange sweatshirt so you could like could see all of where the gun um shots had hit him and so we just told him that um we were going to try and do cpr but then I realized that you can't move a victim after they've been shot like that because we didn't want to hurt him anymore. 
So they said to him, we said to him, like, we're, Val, we're trying to help you. We're going to get help for you. There's nothing we can do but we're right now, but we're going to get help for you. You all had all, including the shooter, gone and eaten together and gone to see the play, and now you're pulling back into Charlottesville, right? So had you noticed any kind of animosity, any tension, any arguments between the shooter and, and some of the victims? No. And to my knowledge, they did not know him. Um, the only thing is that they were on the football team. Did you notice any strange behavior at all from, from the shooter? You, you had had a little bit of interaction with him that day. Yeah, I actually had met him previously in the school year. I met him around, I would say, late September, early October um, during a fashion show tryout, and I helped him learn how to do the um, runway walks, and that was the first time and last time I saw him until a few days ago on the trip. Um, actually, 30 minutes before um, the shooting occurred, I went to the back of the bus to use the bathroom, and I saw him while I was walking back, and I said, hey, Chris, like, did you do the fashion show? Like, how um, are you doing any of the modeling? And he told me that he was too busy and there was too much going on. And I said, me too. I had a lot going on and just couldn't commit to it. And so I said, there's one in the spring. You should try and do that one with me. And he told me he would try and do it with me. So he was very calm. Um, there were really no signs. The only sign I remember is during the play, he was not sitting with anyone. He sat by himself, but it didn't seem very unusual because um, he was not in our class, actually. But of course, you did know uh, the three victims. And, you know, for those of us who never had the opportunity to meet them, I'd just like you to just kind of give us a sense of, of who they were or share a story, anything that might familiarize us with them. Yes. Um, just in general, for all three of them, they were some of the kindest and most compassionate guys I've ever met. They truly lit up the room and made that class just so enjoyable. I just remember telling my sister, my mom, all the time how much I enjoyed that class. It made me get up every Tuesday and Thursday morning to go to school because I knew I would be welcomed with open arms, especially by those three men in the class. Um, specifically, I saw Lavelle first um, when he was laying on the floor. And I just want to say um, he was one of the most amazing people I have met so far. He was, he was amazing. And I was just so happy my friend and I were able to tell him we were trying to help him. And um, every single one of the guys, there was someone on that bus who tried to help them before we had to get off. So I just want their families to know someone was with them. Mm. Um, one of us was with them after they were shot and we loved them so much. Mm. Um, they were so genuine. And then um, I was also very close with Devin and Deshaun. We all sat next to each other in class. I mean, they each one of them were just was just amazing. And I am so heartbroken for them and their families, but I just really want people to know that they they were really one of a kind and they will be really missed, especially in our class and by everyone that knew them. I, I'm sure, and, and Ryan, we thank you so much. I know that it has to be so difficult and, and so appreciate you sharing your memories uh, of them all. Thank you so much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.